guys, how are you? Welcome back to the Hen Heaven channel. Welcome back to another Scottish themed video. So as you already know, my next vlogging trip is to Edinburgh in Scotland, which I'm so excited about. But while I'm there, I'm getting the chance to get another tour of another incredible wedding venue. I cannot wait to share it with you. But because of that, I thought I may as well make a video talking about some Scottish wedding traditions. Because we're a very traditional bunch, or at least, you know, we kind of are. Not to the extent that the stereotype likes to suggest, but we do like our traditions sometimes. So I've made a wee list of a few wedding traditions that I want to talk about. Obviously I can't talk about them all because I will be here all day. So I decided to go for a couple that I know for a fact people still follow through with at a lot of weddings. Maybe not all of them because everyone's different, but at least a good fair amount. If you do want to know some other Scottish wedding traditions though, I'm going to leave a few links to some great websites in the description. Some of these go right into the history of Scottish weddings and it's a very elaborate tradition filled shindig as a wedding. I had no idea. But anyway, let us get on with the traditions. The first tradition I want to talk about is right foot forward. This is a tradition that extends way, 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 way back. I can't remember the year. But the phrase right foot forward is actually in reference to the bride's feet. Basically when the bride leaves wherever she is to go to her wedding ceremony, wherever she's got ready, she is told to leave right foot first and she's supposed to do that throughout the day like any time she's moving off to walk over to see someone or walk out of a building or walk into a room she's to go right foot first and it's basically just something to do with luck. Imagine following through with that if you're the person who's inclined to walk left foot first you'd be checking yourself all day like mm. Next wedding tradition is also to do with the bride. Loads of traditions about the bride and that is to have a little sprig of white heather hidden in her bouquet somewhere. Now it can be visible or it can be hidden amongst other flowers if you don't want to interfere with what other flowers you're using but again it's just a token of good luck people think that it's a nice symbol for luck and it's just something that people can quite easily slot in there you know just to check your boxes if you're a superstitious kind of gal stick some white heather in your bouquet you'll be absolutely fine love this next one's a little bit of a fun one i actually remember learning about this in primary four we did an assembly about different types of weddings and different cultures and I was featured in the one that was talking about Scottish weddings, funnily enough. And this thing we learned about is called the wedding scramble. And what is the wedding scramble, I hear you ask? Well, I will explain. I couldn't get my word out there. <laughs> Basically, when the bride has gotten out of her house or wherever she's getting ready, followed by her dad who's going to escort her down the aisle and they get into their wedding car, the dad will throw a handful of coins out into the street by the car for the kids who have watched the bride leave to scramble for and like gather up. And the reason they did that is because it was believed that throwing coins into the air and having other people collect them would bring about financial good fortune for the new happy couple. Again, it might seem on the suspicious side, but a nice tradition nonetheless. Also a fun one, can you imagine if someone just chucked a pound out there as well and you were the kid that got the pound? Oh, that's a bag of sweets, that. <laughs> tradition number four. Now I'm sure most of you have heard of this little phrase, poem that they like to say at weddings to do with the bride, and that is something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. But I'm betting that not many of you have heard the last line of that, which is actually, and a lucky sixpence in her shoe. Now a sixpence was an old coin that was around way back when. I don't know when they went out of circulation but they quite literally were six pence. Like I think it was down to like a fourteenth of a British pound. AKA six pence. Hence the name sixpence. And the idea was that the bride would put a lucky sixpence into her shoe and she would keep it there during the day. Again just a symbol of luck. A little bit superstitious but because it fits into the rhyme and we tend to follow through with the other ones why not stick a penny in your shoe? I believe this tradition came about from Aberdeenshire and Angus. I could be wrong, I feel like I read that somewhere. But even though that's where it came from, it has actually been adapted by places in America where they will put a one cent or a little penny into a bride's shoe as well. So it's not just us. Next tradition is the incorporation of the Scottish thistle. The thistle has been a symbol for Scotland since about the 1500s, I believe, and there's two different stories as to how that came about. The first is that during the Viking Age, as Vikings were attempting to raid somewhere in Scotland, one of them stepped on a thistle with a bare foot and cried out, which alerted the place that they were trying to raid. The second story, kind of similar, that um, someone was trying to attack a Scottish castle. I can't 
can't remember the details of this story, but someone was trying to attack a castle and because of the weather, the leaves of the thistles and the thistles themselves were quite dry and as they walked across this field, the thistles would crunch beneath their feet and it actually woke and alerted some of the guards of the castle. They should have been awake anyway, shouldn't they? But anyway, that's the other kind of story behind it. But since whatever made it come about, the thistle has definitely been a symbol for Scotland and for Scottish people, and it is just something nice that people tend to incorporate somewhere into their wedding. I've seen people have thistles actually in their flowers and they look beautiful. I've seen people incorporate thistles into their tartan. I've seen people incorporate thistles into napkins, like they've got napkins or table linen, that's the word I was looking for, that might be embroidered with a little thistle at the end. Just little things. Not for any reason in particular, nothing to do with luck or anything like that as far as I'm aware. Um, just something nice and traditional. The next tradition I am pretty proud of and I don't even get to wear them and that is kilts. Yes, we put our men in skirts and you know why? Because they look fabulous. <laughs> I could go into the history of kilts but it's a very long spiel so I'm gonna simplify and just say that wearing kilts at any special event is considered very respectful in Scotland. Even people who aren't from Scotland, if someone was to wear a kilt and they're not from Scotland, I would feel like that's very, very nice of them. But to wear one at a special event, it's just very nice. It's formal dress and when you wear a kilt, you get your socks, um, there's a little um, dagger, fake dagger, don't worry, that goes into the sock. Um, you've got your sporran, which is the little pouch that hangs in front and you've also got obviously your shirt, your waistcoat, your cravat or tie, whatever you're wearing and then your jacket and commonly the groom will also wear a sash. I forget the proper word for it but sometimes the groom would wear that and it would match the tartan of the kilt and it just looks lovely. One thing I will say is wedding photos when you've got you know the bride and the groom and bridesmaids and just the whole wedding party in general. It looks fantastic. Everyone looks so smart and I have to admit, I love, I love a wee kilt. They just look great. It's traditional dress. We get the picture. I would go into what we wear underneath them, but that's not for today. Since I've just talked about kilts, I may as well speak about this now and that is tartan. Now tartan is the name given to a woolen cloth that is woven into different patterns that usually involve some form of check and interlinking lines. They come in loads of different colours and there's actually tartans that are specific to each class in Scotland. Now a clan is to do with the surname of families in Scotland. For example, there is a Bryce Tartan, there is a Wallace Tartan, etc, etc. As far as I'm aware for the Bryce Tartan, there's actually two. There's one with ancient colours and one with modern colours. I'll stick them up on the screen somewhere. Future editing me, help me out. Just so you can get an idea of what I'm on about. It used to be tradition that people would use and incorporate the tartans of their clans into their wedding, but because some people might not be fond of the colours, I can't see me having the ancient Bryce tartan at my wedding. People tend to just pick a tartan that, you know, matches their wedding colours and that is nice for them. There is little clever ways that you can incorporate your clan's tartan in though, so you can have it inside the pleats of a kilt, which is the little bits that overlap at the back. So it's in there and it's a little symbol for you, but no one actually sees it. There's so many different things you can do with it now. But the incorporation of tartan is very common in Scotland. It is actually being intersected now with tweed, which is a little bit different, but still holds a little bit of that tradition in there. And the last tradition I'm going to talk about, quite fitting actually, because it's commonly the last song at a Scottish wedding, and that is Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond is just a very hype song in Scotland, to be honest. The setup of the dance that goes with Loch Lomond, if you can even really call it a dance, um, is that the bride and groom and their immediate family will go into the centre and form a circle and interlink hands. And then everyone else at the wedding, like all their guests, would form another circle right round them that's, you know, usually considerably bigger. And basically everyone just sings along and like swings hands and all like stamp their feet or clap their hands to the doom, 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 doom. <laughs> Dum dum. So that continues for most of the song, but then when it picks up towards the end, um, they do this thing where the, both the circles kind of go in and then come out, but everyone like jumps in and then jumps out, and it's actually like it, it can be brutal on the feet. I'm not gonna lie. I have done many a Loch Lomond in heels, and whoo wee! 
see how I felt that the next day. I really like it though, it's such a nice tradition, it always makes me smile because everyone just has a good laugh with it and chances are you're ending up standing next to someone and linking hands with someone that you've not gotten to speak too much the whole day. It means you get a wee bit of time to chat with them as well. So there you go, those are some Scottish traditions from the very very old to maybe ones that have got a little bit of a modern twist to ones that I think are gonna stick around for a good wee while yet. Please let me know in the comments if where you're from has any traditions for weddings. I honestly don't know that much about weddings in particular different places so it would be really interesting to know. Also if you've been to a Scottish wedding what are some other traditional things that you kind of picked out from what you saw or for things that happened during the ceremony or the reception and different things like that. Just share all. But other than that I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it funny, educational, any combination of the above. If you did give it a big thumbs up and I will see you very soon. Bye!